Hello everyone, in today's video you'll learn how to draw foreshortening starting with basic forms. And if you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump in and do some drawing. Uh, so first I'm just going to give you a basic intro. Something for you to practice that will uh, help you to do this better. So it's just overlapping shapes. Kind of thinking of things like arms and legs is typically the parts that you're going to have the most difficult time foreshortening but really uh, doing them in such a simplistic way where it, it's not um, so well defined that it could be an armor. Like the main thing at this stage is to get used to overlapping these shapes and making them appear to come out towards the viewer, towards the camera in a very dimensional way. And you see even at this right here, this could be an arm, maybe, I guess. Um, but it doesn't really look like one until I, you know, maybe add something like this. And then once you had kind of this wedge-like shape for a hand, and then obviously the fingers, and on and on you go. But again, practice is very simple. You know, maybe this looks simple to you, maybe it doesn't. I guess it depends on where you're at in your uh, art journey. But at the same time, keep it as simple as you need to. You know, build confidence with the things. Let's actually get rid of the hand even. That looks funky anyways. But build confidence with the things that you can kind of mentally process. And do this over and over again until this feels comfortable. And, uh, and also a variety of them obviously. So I'll take this and scale this down. We'll do a couple just to kind of warm up. And, uh, you know, and, and foreshortening doesn't always mean directly at the camera. Uh, we'll do one that's very extreme. And you see a lot of times when you do that, it's just everything gets covered, especially when you add the hand. So, and this, is, this isn't even directly at camera. This is just, you know, really coming out towards us. You can, you know, make out the perspective like this. But at the same time, uh, Notice how I bring this out, but then I still taper that in. It's because I'm thinking of the wrist, and really the wrist is best defined as a as a rectangular shape inside of this uh, circular shape. But I typically do it where it's um, like this cylinder inside of a cylinder is the way I kind of see it. You know, so there's different methods, but at the same time I tapered it inward, even though I'm trying to perceive. That this is getting much larger as it comes towards camera and towards our view. So let's move this one out of the way. And uh, for you, man, I know this is like the boring stuff, but it's got to be done, folks. We've got to practice all sorts of techniques. Um, so let's try, let's see, I'm just trying to picture um, other ways we could explain this. Let's try one that I would perceive as being more of a leg and how I would think about that. So at the top of the leg, I would think of, uh, I can't remember, it's the head of the, the femur or whatever. I, I can't remember the truncator, 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 <laughs> truncator, I think it's a truncator. Anyways, it comes into the, the pelvis like this. So I would start kind of with something like that and say I have a leg coming out towards camera so maybe I draw a big cylinder like this, getting wider. I draw you know, representation, a sim simplification of the knee. And then I have it come down towards camera. Again, it's the lower part of the leg, so it's much smaller than the upper part of the leg. But it's coming down towards camera, so I have to make it larger. And bring this up. Maybe I do something like that and attach a foot. It's going to kind of look like Optimus Prime's foot here at this point. And keeping it basic as possible at this stage, to me, makes a lot of sense. So you're really just focused on introducing a sense of perspective uh, for the body. And it's not that this is something that you're going to hinge upon too greatly as you apply anatomy to it, as you draw over it and through it. It's just something to, again, guide you to an overall sense of depth perception on a 2D surface on this flat uh, sheet of paper or canvas. Uh, so again, practice a lot of these, really experiment with these different shapes, keep them super basic, and see if you can convey 
a sense of depth on the page and uh, explore that. So now let's go ahead and do another example where the arm is coming out towards camera and we'll render some of the anatomy as well. Uh, so with this one, I'm just going to take uh, an arm and bring it out towards camera. I'll keep it kind of simple, but I'll make it typical of a, you know, since I predominantly teach uh, comic book art, that's, uh, that's what it's going to look like. So what I do here is I just bring this arm out. Sometimes I'll start right with the hand. Uh, you know, make iterative changes. So for instance, I'm drawing these basic shapes, right? Big blocky shape like I did before. Forearm gets bigger than the upper arm. Uh, looks like a cylinder. The shoulder connects kind of to the side. Looks like a big sphere at first, but it's again, it's an oversimplification. Hand comes out towards, you know, the camera a little bit. Maybe they're doing some kind of weird pose like a evil villain would hold out their hand like and these are basic overlaps of uh, cylinders really but you could really get away with just doing some ovals here and then so now I've got this simplified arm it doesn't look very interesting but it, again I can make iterative changes to get something better um, but then as I work back to the torso, I'm going to turn the torso away from our view. Because if he's raising this arm forward, it looks kind of weird if you bring an arm forward and the rest of the body is um, straight. You know, you can do it. It's, 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 got, it's just got to be done in a way that looks cool. It's usually you have to do some balancing with the other limbs to make it appear as, as uh, interesting as you can. But it's really easy to just turn the body away, bring this arm forward, and it kind of reinforces that foreshortened kind of effect. But again, basic shape. So the chest, the chest is really just this basic shape. Okay, the ribs, this basic shape. Abs, this basic shape, and so on and so forth. It's just, I'm trying to piece this together with very basic forms so I can just see if it's going to work and you know also you know always someone always calls me out about this what about the action line what about the gesture I am thinking of that but you know throw in uh, some gesture of the spine the arc of the back if you want um, as far as an action line you could say that the action line was something like this but you know it's more of a stance I don't I don't feel like it needs an action line in this one but some people do tend to call me out on that so that's I get it maybe I should be doing that more but you can draw through these this isn't like one technique uh, circumvents the other it all goes together it's all it's all pieces to a bigger puzzle I think I'm gonna throw that on a t-shirt I am a piece of a bigger puzzle that's, that's like a that's a cool coffee cup or something. Okay, so like that. And there we go. We got a basic pose. And then maybe for this arm, you know, they'll be super traditional or typical. He's got his fists clenched up over here. He's, he's mad. <laughs> Everybody in my comics are, is always mad. They need therapy. That's why I like to show the boys, because it's like, wouldn't that really be how superheroes and villains were? You know, they'd all just be kind of just messed up in the head from having all those powers. I think that's more accurate. Okay, so even like that, that's a little bit low, but it's it's a basic sh representation of a forearm and a fist. Um, again, it's really just a tapered cylinder with another cylinder coming out of it. And then one side different than the other, because that's another thing with anatomy. And one side is always different than the other, so you have to pay attention to that. And even here, it's like I've overly simplified it, but now I have to clean it up in a way that makes sense. Now here's a weird thing about the shoulder as well. When the shoulder raises up, the chest actually goes in front of it. But you'll see a lot of times in comics where people do a very spherical shoulder because it looks more dimensional and it shows... Um, it, it shows that it's really in front of the body, really in front of the upper torso. So they're really getting this right as a, as a mix, I think, because when artists do it well, 
and study from life because you want to obviously have some basis of understanding there. But it's it's kind of getting the, the anatomy just right where areas it pokes up in front and then areas where it blends into and around the bicep. And so you usually get like this little bend here with the chest. Something like this. We know that all the muscles kind of start here and they spin towards this direction. So again, study your anatomy books and there's also times you just, instead of a big line right there, you just want to kind of hint to that, that form. Okay, so you might do some rendering, uh, but you really want to play around with your broken up lines. That's why this looks so weird at this point, because everything's connected and that's just not, you know, it's not the way things are, right? This, we're not running around all segmented. So let me take this now, clean it up one more time for you. Real quick anyways, and then we'll call it good because we don't want to spend all day on this basic idea. But I, I really want you to just see that it, it's just a, that basic starting point of these building blocks. And then you have to pay attention to overlaps. You have to play, uh, play around with uh, extreme versions of it. And, and then take your photos that you see that are foreshortened and your favorite comic panels and redraw them in your own style and, and really... I don't know, I think it's good to just overly simplify pretty dramatic, um, intense shots that are, you know, like these, we see these comic pieces that are ultra detailed and rendered and all this and that. And I think those are the ones that's really good to just break those down into basic shapes and kind of look through them a bit, almost like light table them and draw through them. And uh, you learn so much from that. I think I do anyway, so hopefully you will as well. So now with this, I'm just going to Kind of run through here and pick it apart a little bit kind of make it look a little bit more natural by using segmentations or i'm sorry i should say not use not segmenting the work so much but by uh redrawing it with uh lines that are less segmented a little more line weight i don't know why i said segments when that's the opposite of what i'm doing Gotta yeah, love it. And since I am drawing a bit more quickly, it's not gonna be as refined, forgive me, but I don't want this to be too awfully uh, boring for you or, you know, take away from what I'm really trying to show you. It's not really how to draw a full character, but how to at least get there, how to understand foreshortening and develop it. So, yeah, so even like the chest here, I would just really work on the lower side of the pecs like this. And maybe a little bit in the middle, but maybe maybe none. You know, it's you really have to play around with these broken up lines, line weight, line variation, and see how much you can just hint to certain areas I think it's a bad habit to go around and just trace every single muscle group. And I'm definitely guilty of that. So I'm, I'm talking, you know, like, hey, that's something I need to work on. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to play around with where you, where you divide these muscle groups up to. How much you get into that. Because then you kind of lose some of the feeling that it's real anatomy, I think. You're so busy chopping everything up, putting harsh edges on everything. as I keep picking at it and adding more and more. Okay, so the other thing is when we, t when we raise our arm up like this, the trapezius dips down more. Should have a mirror by my art table so I can double check what I'm saying, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it works. And so with this arm, that's uh, you know the foreshortened arm, I'll just show you how I'd try to render this out. So I bring the attachment in through here the bicep kind of pokes around. And then here, kind of flattens out a little bit. It's tempting to want to draw the tricep right there, but I feel like if anything, you would maybe see it down here at this point. So not, you know, not up here, it just would be forced, I think. And then with the forearm, it kind of protrudes up, Get a little bit of a Temple right here, 
connects to the bicep. You got a bony landmark here. You got the forearm muscle coming around like this. Something like that. And then for the fingers, remember what I said about these are really just overlapping cylinders. Just like that. You can do like little ovals on the back of the fingers. That usually kind of helps. Little ovals right here. Just kind of pinpoint where all the orientation is for the knuckles. There's a bit of a triangle right here. And then webbing across here. Oval here. And I think it's okay to like let this hand be um, off at first. But just get some shapes in there that you can relate to. And then go back and change it a little bit. So let's see if I can illustrate what I'm saying. Make it work. So yeah, as I'm looking at that, I don't think that's bad. I just feel like the tip of the thumb is a bit maybe awkward. So let me lighten that up. Should get that right out of there for now. And then bring that down. More of a stressed hand pose. Let's check that from a distance. Yeah, it's kind of a weird hand, isn't it? Okay, let's try. I feel like it's too big, but then again, it is foreshortened. All right, I'm going to look at it for a minute, come back to it. So, lat sides. Muscles kind of come up like this. All right, so there we go. Let's, let's give them a quick face here, or not a face, but at least a head shape. And just remember too, if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, I've got a full course on drawing superheroes where I go in a lot more in depth to the entire process. Uh, so I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below and I'm always open to your suggestions for what you'd like to see more of. Okay, so there's our basic pose. And it, again, it's not perfect you know, by any uh, stretch of the imagination, but at the same time, it's, there's enough here where I can work with this now. And you're, by the way, you're welcome to screen grab this and draw your own character through it. Change the hand poses, change the proportions. You know, just play around with it. I mean, the experiment, that's how you learn. But uh, I would probably just go back and, and just keep iterating, you know, doing iterations of the hand. And sometimes I'll, I'll do that off to the side. I think this is overall just a battle. Let me try one more real quick and then we'll call it good. But basically, if I was to take this and say, well, maybe the hand's it's just coming down too far. It looks kind of weird like that, right? So I'm going to play around with the, the, the wrist just has a lot of range of movement. That's why I like doing those kind of creepy ones where it's dropping down. He's being overly dramatic with the hand gesture. I don't know. Um, but, you know, you, you can actually just pull a reference from a real hand gesture because they do have kind of... Well, they do have meaning, right? Like, it's not just a random pose of a hand. That's why when we look at hands, we're like, oh, that's a bad hand because there's so much meaning and expressiveness in a hand. We know exactly, maybe not exactly, but pretty closely what the person's trying to do when they make a certain gesture. Um, so that's where really pulling reference on this one's probably the best idea for me, but I'm going to fight through it anyways. So you can kind of um, gesture it out first. So let's say, let's do something like this. So to me, that's more of a gesture, even though I drew the finger as cylinders, uh, the rest I kind of went for a little more of a, a feeling of gesture and then draw over and through that. And I do mean over and through because it's, it's really easy to just go, oh, I'm just gonna trace around it now and that'll be fine. If That's okay if you really nailed the gesture, but you have to really think that, nah, this is my rough sketch. I'm probably not done yet. So you have to look through it as you're drawing around it and, and those things work together. 
So it's always a, for me, it's always a combination of structure and gesture as I'm working, you know, through the artwork. It's not like I, I shut off one thing and, you know, just do the one thing and, and not the other. It's structure, gesture, silhouettes, I'm looking at all of it. Like that finger's looking, the thumb anyways, looking weird, but let your thumb do that. I kind of point back. So your your finger and your thumb make an L shape, but then it's not a perfect L, right? If you look down at your, I don't know, it's pretty close, but I don't think you would do that as you're pointing. You'd probably put your thumb down more and it would tilt back out. Yeah, I, th I think I'm gonna leave it. It's not a perfect hand, but I think it does still get the point across. Yeah, and check it from a distance. Probably should flip it, but yeah, and I'm just gonna sit here and keep redrawing it. Again, it's not about getting this thing perfect. Um, I think that if you get it close enough to what you're after, then you can just pull reference and fix any any of the things that are really bothering you. Um, but it, it's really important that you just practice these overlapping shapes, and then try to get this sense and feeling of, of depth and perspective going. And again, it really all starts with these right here, these very simple rudimentary forms and shapes. And I've seen people when I've shared this content and they're like, oh, I don't like doing that. It, you know, I go right for the anatomy. And it's fine if you're comfortable just doing that. And I'm not saying this should be the only way you approach this. I'm just saying, give it a try, see how it feels for you. Uh, use all these techniques together. Don't you know? Again, it's not one or the other. It's not highway, my way or the highway. You know, stuff like that. It's it's uh, just learn as much as you can. Try it all. Uh, see what works for you. Thanks very much for watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.